Oh man, I sure wish there was a way to play this game in a different way, and also a possibly up the chances of peeing my pants just a, just a little bit. Hey, douchebag! Yes, that's you. Cecilia is talking to me. Is that right? Grab that VR headset over there for a brand new, exciting, scary pee pants experience. Wow. Being in the pants, not always guaranteed. Huh? Nothing. Five Nights at Freddy's, what most consider one of the most popular indie games as of the last decade. I mean, look at its track record. Five Nights at Freddy's 1 and 2 were released very shortly within time span of each other. I mean, from August to November to be exact, and both considered huge successes within the franchise? And while personally, I never cared for Five Nights at Freddy's 3 like it did with 1 and 2, all three of these titles have the correct feel of atmosphere as well as the fear factor. And also... <laughs> Yes, plenty of jump scares. I still think jump scares are the cheapest form of horror. Almost anyone is going to jump from being scared suddenly when you're not expecting it, but FNAF really popularized it within the horror gaming genre. So, I have to give respect where it's due. Okay, TZ, thank you for telling me about things I already knew about. I mean, Five Nights at Freddy's 1 through 3 are incredible games, and this isn't even the games you're supposed to be reviewing today. Correct, you are. I'm going to be reviewing a game from 2019 and a way to re-experience Five Nights at Freddy's 1 through 3. And how are we going to re-experience this trilogy? In virtual reality, of course. That's right, you're now in the office. While Scott Cawthon, the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's, did help a little bit in this production, Steel Wool Games is the ones who've put full work and publishment into this game. But TZ, I don't have VR. How can I experience this game for myself as somebody who does not have VR headset? I'm glad you asked. You see, seven months later, Steel Wool Games did officially release a non-VR version of this game. So, anybody can experience this. We will be checking out the VR port of this game, however, because... That's how it was initially released, and I mean, I have the headset for it. It'd be kind of foolish not to do it in VR when, you know, I have the VR, you know. What is Help Wanted VR? Again, Help Wanted VR is a reimagining of Five Nights at Freddy's 1 through 3 where you play in a more 3D environment and you actually have to move your body to protect yourself. Help Wanted also has an assortment of different minigames to play. We will talk about all of the minigames when we get to them in the review. Then, after you play those minigames, if you purchase the DLC, you can play the Halloween bonus content and have a deeper Five Nights at Freddy's experience within the VR world. Just talking about all this got me excited for the review. Let's just jump right into it. We'll be breaking this review into multiple sections. I will be playing the first three games and get as far as I feel comfortable playing, giving my take on how I like each game, how it plays, and how it relates to the original. After that, I will move on to the minigames the base game has included and will score each minigame on replayability, understandability, fear factor, and creativity, a four point score system. After that, I will be moving on to the DLC content and score them in the same way I did with the original minigames, replayability, understandability, Fear Factor, and Creativity, the same four-point score system. After that, I will be discussing the story stuff that the game has included in the base game. I will put up a spoiler warning when we get to that point, so if you want to experience this game for yourself without the story spoilers, hey, there you go, you can. Alrighty, I'm ready to start playing Help Wanted, and we gotta start things off with... the title screen. Of course. Once we hit New Game, we are brought to a little cutscene explaining what you are doing. What you're about to experience, the poor past, the terrible rumors that filled the minds of the public. We know that Fazbear Entertainment has developed something of a bad reputation over the last few decades. And while it's true that some stories associated with our name were loosely based on actual events, the majority of them were total fabrications from the mind of a complete lunatic. That's why we have recreated many of these completely fictitious scenarios, lies, that you've been fed over the last several years into a hilarious VR game. We are told to sign a waiver form by pushing this button here. 
I didn't push the button, but they took my word for it, so we'll go right through. Air virtual experience. And now we enter the lobby and are presented Five Nights at Freddy's. So we'll put our finger on night one and we'll start our experience. So we have officially started our first night. We are given the same introduction call as we are given from the original game. A cool feature is putting the phone to your ear and will give off sound to the ear you put it next to. As long as your headphones are on the right way. I like this version of Five Nights at Freddy's because the audio isn't the only thing on your side. You now have visual when Bonnie is walking the hallways or when Chica is right outside your window. Thankfully with Chica, you don't need to turn the light on to notice when she's standing outside your door. Close the door and you'll be fine. Bonnie isn't exactly easy to see when he peeks at your door. I usually play it safe when it comes to him. I close the door on my left when he's simply just behind my office. So after getting my fear factor maintained, I started letting Bonnie walk past the office door without closing it. Turns out the only time is when they're outside the door. Freddy honestly feels more active in this version of Five Nights at Freddy's. I have seen him outside my door a few times, but I don't recall him seeing him that much when I played the original Five Nights at Freddy's unless I ran out of power. Freddy is also easy to see on camera in my opinion within the VR version. I had a rough time seeing him on camera from the original game, but I can point him out right there, there, and obviously there. Freddy doesn't give an audio or visual cue when he's around your area, unlike Bonnie and Chica being seen walking down the hallway. So you do have to turn that light on occasionally more just to make sure he's not there. I wonder if I can see Bonnie walking down the hallway. Wait, is that Fox? Ah! Hey, well, day four. I think you can do it. Five Nights at Freddy's plays well in VR, and I had a blast with this rendition of the game. The audio, the atmosphere, seeing Bonnie and Chica just simply walking the hallways next to you. It was a great way to re-experience this version of the first classic entry of this franchise. The second entry of the Five Nights franchise is personally my favorite of the bunch. I remember spending my lunch break in high school playing the iOS port of this game and trying my hardest to beat the game. I had a really good tactic playing it, but was never able to finish Night 7. I recall the response time on mobile was terrible and didn't register correctly, hence I would always get killed. The difference with Five Nights at Freddy's 1 and 2 is drastic in many ways. There are no doors, no possibility of running out of power, double the animatronics, and gimmicks. But I had an easier time playing this port of Five Nights at Freddy's. My only complaint is the response of pushing down the music box wind up button is a bit finicky. I can keep my hand on the button and barely move ever and for whatever reason it will just stop winding. Getting Mangle away from the front door of the office is still annoying as ever. Man, I'm feeling reversed right now. I feel like I'm really there. Get the fuck away from me. Foxy isn't nearly as bad in this version as the original port to my knowledge. You kind of just push the button down a few times and he'll go away. Unlike having to spam it almost for 15 to 20 seconds straight just to get him away from you. I should have mentioned this back in Five Nights at Freddy's 1, but I will always recommend playing with headphones plus the VR headset. Audio cues for Balloon Boy help to know when he's here without having to really check when he's there. You can see when Toy Freddy, Toy Bonnie, or Toy Chica are walking to their positions, which is very helpful for the case of Bonnie and Chica knowing when they'll sneak into their respective vents. Vent noises will help and are super audible with headphones on while playing. I love this port of Five Nights at Freddy's too, and even remember doing all the nights on a stream one time without breaking a sweat. This port is fun and easy, and that's what I love about it. My only real complaint is the fact you have to unlock the withered animatronics to wander around and hunt you down, and you can only get that for their specific night. Other than Foxy, the withers don't come to get you in any way, despite being mentioned in the phone call as potential threats. By now, I'm sure you've noticed the older models sitting in the back room. Uh, those are from the previous location, and we just use them for parts now. The idea at first was to repair them. Uh, they even started retrofitting them with some of the newer technology. But they were just so ugly, you know? 
and the smell. Uh, uh, so the company decided to just go in a whole new direction and make them super kid friendly. Uh, those older ones shouldn't be able to walk around, but if they do, the whole Freddy head trick should work on them too, so whatever. I get having too much is overwhelming in VR, but this is something I wasn't a fan of. Bro, that's so gnarly, dude. Five Nights at Freddy's 3. While I don't hold a lot near and dear to this game, I always loved Springtrap's design. I actually never fully played this one in VR before, and it's mainly because I struggled to understand it when I played it at first. But that is not the game's fault. It's more so on me. I'd rather repair all and wait a longer time than the time to repair video, audio, and ventilation. That's on me. Good news, there's no real threat here on night one. They get spring trap on night two when you listen to the phone call. You're not gonna believe this. We found one. A real one. Uh, uh, uh gotta go, man. Uh, well, well look, it, it's in there somewhere. I, I'm sure you'll see it. Okay, I'll leave you with some of this great audio that I found. So night one is just kind of getting used to the new play style. That isn't like the first two games, which I feel is generous. You now have to keep spring trap away from your office, and you have our own way of doing it. Use the audio of Balloon Boy on a specific camera you want him at, and he should move to there after several laughs. Here's my experience with FNAF 3, though. I had almost zero issues with this game. I did get a few jump scares here and there, but I was still teaching myself how it worked in full. Once I had the knowledge on how it worked, here's what I did. I kept him between the upper camera locations and not allowing him to come any further down. I would close the vent door that he would have access to in that one area, giving him zero way to get me so cheaply. If Phantom Balloon Boy or Phantom Mangle appeared on the cameras, I would immediately switch the cameras. If Phantom Foxy was in my office, just avoid eye contact with him. That's all I had to do. If Phantom Freddy appears, all you have to do is just avoid eye contact with him. He just kind of walks around. He's chilling like a villain. Sure, Phantom Foxy might be stuck in my room for about an hour, but... If I needed to do maintenance or anything, I'd just keep my head down and be like, yeah, I did it. I had zero issues with Springtrap in Five Nights at Freddy's 3 in general once I had the system down. The atmosphere is great, but come on. Five Nights at Freddy's 3 had to be the easiest one so far. First, we'll discuss how to operate the mascots when they are in animatronic form. For each of operation, the animatronics are set to turn and walk towards the boundary. This is an easy and hands-free approach to making sure the animatronics stay where the children are for maximum Moving on to the minigames now, and frankly, I was really looking forward to these when this game was first announced. I did a good portion of them on my streams, but now I will be doing them all, and as far as I feel like playing them. So, we will start off with this. DARK ROOMS! Wait... Was that the... Are you gonna list the minigames? That's actually kinda cool, actually. Yeah, keep doing that, please. Dark Rooms for the first two games is pretty much the minigame for FNAF 4. You have to listen to audio cues for both Plus Trap and Nightmare Balloon Boy. Nightmare Balloon Boy is a bit easier with audio cues with his Hi or Hello While with Plus Trap, you have to have your ears open After that, you move on to Plush Baby Which is a survive till 6am minigame with three circus baby plushies And your battery is slightly limited Here's my issue with this game mode I know two locations where they show up You shine the flashlight in their face and they run away in fear However, there's always a third Maybe there's four God, I don't have no clue how many there actually is. All I know is when I hear Circus Baby's voice go off, You should have known I'd find you. I look around the room and cannot find it. Is it glitching? Is it just impossible for me to find? Am I stupid? Probably. I mean, I checked behind me. There's no location behind me. So where are the areas? 17 fucking locations? You expect me to track down Baby in 17 different locations? I feel like now is the perfect time to explain the three stages of jump scares. Well, at least for me it is. Stage 1. 
The first stage is pretty much actually getting spooked, jumping in fear, or reacting accordingly. This stage lasts about two or three times when it becomes consistent. Stage 2. Stage 2 takes oh, on the role of being this. where you can begin to curse and swear at the things bitch. scaring you. Like, it's not funny anymore. You aren't scary. You're annoying. <laughs> it's kind of like that, and this stage lasts the longest, I would say. <laughs> After about five or ten times of this stage, you move on to the dreaded stage 3. You quit. Yep. You're so disappointed and done with the game, you just take the headset off and put it down and walk away. Why should I bother getting annoyed when there are better things to do? While it takes the longest time to get to the stage of jump scares, it takes the most toll on probably not opening the game for a very long time. So now that I've reached stage 2 of jump scares with this mini game, I'm gonna move on before I reach stage 3. Hearts and Services! This is the one mode I looked forward to the most when the release trailer came out. So this game mode, you have to listen to the voiceover's exact instructions on what to do. Let's close him up. Simply replace both eyes in the same order that you removed them, then close up the faceplate, and we'll call it a day. Includes your parts and services task. Make sure Chica is not hiding any other treats inside her beak. To open her beak, carefully press the two buttons located on the sides of Chica's head. Oh no! It looks like Chica has picked up some unwanted friends. Punch that animatronic in the mouth! What? Really? Okay, I guess I'll have to follow through with. <laughs> Parts and Services is personally my favorite one to play. The instructions are straightforward thanks to the guy helping out. I had moments where I would struggle with Foxy and slightly with Freddy, but I never felt anger or disappointment when said jump scare would happen. It was a fun and enjoyable experience for me. Well done. This concludes all your parts and service tasks. Pirate Cove can now be reopened. Bent Repair! Vent Repair is definitely another fun minigame included with this game. The instructions aren't given to you like they are in Parts and Services, but honestly, it's almost obvious what needs to be done each time you play. The fear factor is definitely included if you don't operate fast enough with the repairs, especially on Entered, when you don't operate fast enough with the first or the third tests. The second test took me some time, but after using parts of my brain I didn't know I had, I was able to pass this without any issues. And yes, I did dance when the music played while descending the elevator. I mean, look at those hands! Night Terrors! So, do you want to play FNAF 4? Because that's what this minigame pretty much is. Personally, I dislike this one with a burning passion. I don't think there's a single minigame, DLC, or base game that I dislike more than this one. It's so confusing, and while yes, listen for heavy breathing and take him out, I was lost and confused the entire way through. Personally, I disliked Five Nights at Freddy's 4, so this kind of gave me more reason to hate this mechanic. While some may like 4, I did not enjoy this and frankly don't see myself even passing Fun Time Freddy. This is an addition that was included after passing Fun Time Freddy. I did have to play them all eventually to, well, you know why probably. I will say this game mode is very tedious to play. I watched guides on how to beat them properly and it was go to one door, close the door, flash the room, go to the other door, close that door, rinse and repeat. The Nightmare Unite and the Baby played quite well, but everything was super tedious. Yes, everything is a strategy to playing, but this one took the cake for me. And now we move towards the Curse of Dreadbear DLC portion of the game. This was released for Halloween of the same year as the game's release and featured plenty of different minigames to play and enjoy. Nothing was canned to the DLC, so there was no story for us to experience here, but we did get to have fun with several mini games that are included. Using the same point system as the mini games for the core game, we will start things off with Push Skin Patch. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, fucking joy. It's plush baby again. Yes, we just reskinned the minigame TZ already dislikes with a burning passion. We gave them masks of different characters. We made loud noises happen, and did we bet you to pretty much have to keep that light on to survey the scene every fucking second, leaving no time to charge. If I'll be honest, I did get past 3 a.m., which, if you recall, my experience over on Plush Baby, not even 2 a.m. Pirate Ride! So there's no scares to this one. Not a single one. Honestly, I was expecting a scare, but no, nothing. It's literally a target shooter game mode. And honestly, I had both a blast playing it, but also felt super sick while playing it. I won't blame them for adding this in. It's something brand new, but why now? I mean, yeah, it's a motion game, but God, not everyone's adjusted to this in VR. No fear at all, but it is creative to include a shoot 'em up gallery type mini game to a game that doesn't seem like it. I enjoyed it. The real trigger was friendship all along. Happy birthday! Before we move on to the next mini game, I would like to show you somebody who probably had more fun with the pirate ride than I did. Do you know this ride is for pirates? Our matey, it's a pirate ride! Yo ho ho and a bottle of pirate ride! <laughs> Sorry. Corn Maze! Core Maze is quite the interesting minigame going on here. It's pretty much having a red pair of pants on and Foxy takes on the role of a bull. What you have to end up doing is hiding from Foxy whenever he spots you. You also need to collect a color-coded key to escape from the hell spawn you've been brought to. It's not too hard on the eyes and you can turn yourself personally. No need to use the right stick which in my opinion disorients you way more. Hallway! Before I start. I just, I just want to show you the instructions I was given. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Ready? Move. You get to the end of the hallway. You got it, game. All the characters from Five Nights at Freddy's 4 are here now. They're in the game. You have to walk down the longest of hallways in existence to get you a room. Seriously, where the fuck do you live? If you run into Foxy, you have to pretty much just freeze in place and don't move. Or else he'll get you. Walk in front of Chica or Bonnie and you'll get jump scared. Once you get past a certain point, Foxy will stop coming after you and Freddy will become the new target in the hallway. Freddy is behind you, by the way. With his little Freddy's minions. Oh, that's hard to say. Which means you can't stop for too long or else you'll be gotten. I had zero hope being this minigame going into this review, but little did I know I was able to do it. While I was able to figure it out how to play on my own, instructions were pretty unclear once again. Build a mango! Fast reaction skills is how you win this minigame. This is for sure. Basically, you need to take parts from the conveyor belt and put it on the chute to create. You also need to shock the little Freddies off. I've only experienced Freddies show up once per game, so shock them off and you're done. Only put the part in when it appears on the screen. I had terrible luck and kept dumping stuff in when I shouldn't have. I did very much enjoy this minigame, but I found myself laughing and having a good time when I would screw up and throw stuff at Mangle. Frankly, this was a great fun minigame that I wouldn't mind playing every now and then for funsies. Also, can we just take a look at how I won this? Oh no, it looks like there aren't enough components. Perhaps the instructions were not clear. Perhaps you should seek employment elsewhere. Piece of cake. Animatronic engineering is just that simple. See you next time. Trick or treat! Hello again, my friends. May I present to you the instructions of this game mode? This has got to be the most straightforward the instructions I've ever been in this entire DLC so far. Trick or Treat is playing the game of Guess Who. Look through the windows and find out who is at the door. Find out who isn't at the door. Tell Mangle to go away by looking like her. Guess correctly three times in a row, and you win. 
I had a pretty chill time, and I don't think I felt really scared at one point. Also, when you see the words, please ring doorbell, you should definitely not defy that rule. Dreadbear. Quick question. Am I just dumb or stupid? I've tried this Dreadbear game many times. I think I put more effort into this mini game than any of the other mini games. And I try doing them differently each time. Is there a secret way to doing this? Am I just terrible? Do I not match the frequency? Is that not what the brain is supposed to look like? How does the sizing work? Sorry, but I was left with more questions after this minigame since it's terrible at explaining that. Even though I read the frequency, map, and chart correctly. I still got it wrong each time. While I love the creativity of this minigame, it has the poor score on the fucking list. Danger! Keep out! So I remember my stream telling me before, don't play this minigame, TZK. It's not good. Don't try it. And that made me think now, when seeing this minigame, is it really that bad? Is it impossible to understand? Is it like the Springlock suit minigame that caused me to cry years ago? Yes! Oh, fuck! Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> well, let's take a look since it has three nights. I only assume that because I see night one. All right, I can be honest with this one now. I really like this one. It's all about strategy on this game mode. You have five flash opportunities here. You could recharge your flashes by turning the power off for a little bit. If you do it before you hit five, you don't have to wait as long. However, they will appear suddenly at times. While you do get a few seconds when they are at your door, you have to hope your power comes back before they break. At this time, I'm going to talk about the story that someone exists here in Help Wanted. Now, have you ever looked to your right before about playing this game and see some... Matrix Rabbit? Oh, you have? Well, that there is Glitchtrap. He is unique to the VR entry and he will get kind of closer and closer as time goes on. TZ, could you define how what you mean by as time goes on? Well, have you ever seen those purple tapes before? You haven't? Well, <laughs> here's their locations in case you were wondering. There's one on the ride in the intro scene, just before the door. Look to your left and grab it. Under a bag of chips inside the counter. The gumball machine on your right. It is in the left machine. On the desk to the right of you in FNAF 1. Behind the panel in FNAF 3. Dark Rooms has two. One on the right of you in Plush Baby's level, and another on the left wall in Funtime Foxy's level. In Parts and Services, there is one in the trash bin on Chica's level, one under Freddy's thigh, and one on the floor in Foxy's level. In Vent Repair, it is under the pipes to the right of Mangle's level. On Ennard's Black Light level, when descending down to the first set of levels, you will see a Nightmare Fredbear on the way down. It is in its mouth. Night Terrors has some as well. On Baby's level, it is behind you on the shelf. In Nightmare Fredbear's level, it is in front of the closet on the floor. There's also one at the end of the pizza party level, buy some pizza. There's also a gallery mode too. Open the right cabinet and find the final tape. To unlock the pizza party level, you have to beat everything. But TZ, you did beat everything. Even the things you didn't like. Okay. And also this stuff too. I suppose I should also review pizza party. PIZZA PARTY! This is pretty much the last minigame to close the game, and also roll the credits as well. You run through all the game modes you just played, entering certain doors to get to the end. Use the flashlight to see which door you have to go through using the arrows on the floor, or the walls, or the ceilings. You also have to select your favorite flavor of cake and favorite topping on a pizza. Once you do that, you'll be permitted to get to the final room where you get your pizza and cake. But you are lured to step through the curtain courtesy of Glitchtrap. Well, step on up and you'll have a microphone in your hand. The credits will roll 
You'll dance on stage with a microphone and sing your favorite song while Glitchtrap dances around. I don't really know what to rank this since it's not straightforward, but also straightforward. There's almost zero jump scares unless you literally sit in a room for 40 seconds. So my final rank for this one is the ultimate five out of four. Why you may ask? Cause listen to me get to sing my tunes on stage. Mine diamonds. Beat pizza party and you will unlock gallery mode. Once we collect all the tapes, we will notice this jackass here is pretty much next to us. Go to the nightmare section and grab the tape player. Listen to the last tape and you will basically challenge glitch trap. It's a very strange thing going on here. It's just, if you just stand there, you become turn. You're basically him, but that's not the true ending. To achieve the true ending, you have to turn the lever to the right, hit the showtime button, hit the button on the left of the screen you've been using, then the last remaining button. You then get this super unique cutscene that can only be seen once. and then you're sent back to the menu. Glitch app is nowhere to be found, but there is this rabbit plushie next to you. That is supposed to represent him. And he's the closest ever. So let that violence out! I really enjoyed this game, if I'll be fully honest. I was never really exactly the biggest Five Nights at Freddy's fan ever. I stopped really following the game after FNAF 4 came out, and while I enjoyed the original Five Nights at Freddy's to Five Nights at Freddy's 3, and 3 is kind of where I was starting to fall off at the first time, I really enjoyed Five Nights at Freddy's 3 this time around. Even though it was so simple. I mean, him and that corner have a relationship going right now. The assortment of minigames with the DLC adds a super fun experience and gives you so much to do with the game that isn't just the norm of one through three. While not all of them are hits or something I fondly liked, I did come around to playing them and beating them. Did I hate it? Absolutely not. If you want to experience or re-experience the first three titles of the franchise, you'll feel fear. You'll have fun. You're gonna laugh at the stupidest mistakes you make in the silly game. Now, if there is one regret I have while playing this game, I didn't pee my pants. What?